This series of videos will cover all of the features in contact. We'll continue with the main control panel in the contact window. In the load import tab, you have the show replace multi dialog. When enabled, a warning will be displayed to check if you want to discard the current multi when loading a new multi. If this is, if this is disabled, contact will replace the current multi instantly. Load samples in background. When enabled, instruments saved with contact 4.1 and up will load in the background. Convert third party samples to WAVE when saving. When enabled, samples in, in third party formats such as REX will be saved in, in a WAVE format. If this, is a, if this is disabled, samples will be saved in their native formats. Unwind automation IDs for additionally loaded patches. When enabled, automation IDs will be reassigned for newly loaded instruments if a current instrument uses the same ID. Force load pre 2.0 patches in DFD mode. When enabled, contact 1.1 instruments and higher will be loaded with the source module set to DFD by default. Limit file names to 31 characters. When enabled, we'll restrict the file names to 31 characters during imports. Import key switch sources into separate instruments. If this is enabled, when importing third-party formats, contact will split the patch into several, several instruments, each of which will contain groups that were assigned to a single key in the source patch. Write absolute paths instead of relative paths. When enabled, contact will use absolute sample references for instruments that are being converted via the import button in the file browser. This keeps sample references intact if you move the instrument file to another location. Also, this only affects when you use the import button, browser import destination file format. Contact will save samples in the format specified here when converting samples via the import button in the file browser. Map bulk converted single samples. If enabled and you convert multiple samples, they are combined into a single instrument and the samples are spread out on the keyboard. If disabled, a separate instrument will be created for each sample. Let's move on to the database tab. Automatically add load saved files to database. When this is enabled, Contact will automatically add any files that you access to the database if it's not already in it. Include samples in database scan. If enabled, will include information about samples in a database when scanning. It's not recommended to enable this option as it can greatly increase the size of your database. This is your database location list. You can specify the locations that the database uses here. The Add button will add location. The Remove button will remove a location. Update picks up changes while preserving user settings such as ratings and color at the cost of a larger database. Please note that in Contact 5.1 and up, user settings are deprecated and no longer saved. Reset and scan. This will erase the entire database and rebuild it from scratch. All user settings such as ratings and color will be deleted. Like I said earlier, in contact 5.1 5, 5 and up, user settings such as ratings and color are deprecated. Now let's move on to the memory tab. The memory tab contains settings that allow you to to optimize contacts memory usage for your specific hardware configuration. Override instruments preload size. If enabled, contact will ignore the preload buffer size that's embedded in contact 2.0 and up instrument files and use this specified buffer buffer size. It is, it is recommended to leave the preload buffer size to default. Although memory improvements might be possible by moving the slider to the lowest possible setting that you can get to without experiencing playback errors. With a decent enough computer with enough memory, 
uh, this setting really doesn't make a difference so I would leave it as default um, I currently leave mine disabled I prefer to let, let the preload size um, be defined by the instrument contact memory server this is a Mac OS X only feature in OS X 10.5 and earlier you couldn't address more than 4 gigabits of RAM and technically that would be 3.5 if you're on a 32-bit Mac you can access more than 4 gigs with contact memory server use memory server enables contact memory server to use KMS it requires OS X 10.5 or later at least 4 gigs of RAM and administrator privileges. You must restart contact for KMS settings to take effect. After you enable KMS, contact will auto set the size of accessible RAM. The amount of determined accessible RAM will be displayed here. KMS is a separate app that runs in the background and as long as KMS is enabled, contact no longer loads samples. All running instances of contact Share, share the KMS and can access samples loaded. KMS will boot automatically as soon as you start a contact instance. The KMS utility appears in the system bar so you can monitor the amount of RAM used by the server process. Memory server mode. Automatic. When you choose automatic, KMS will keep all samples used by contact instances stored in RAM. If an instrument is removed, samples that are no longer needed will be removed from the KMS sample pool. KMS will automatically shut down when all contact instances are closed. Manual mode. This is a mode that I choose to use. In manual mode, KMS does not remove samples when an instrument is removed or when all contact instances are closed. All samples will stay in memory as long as KMS is running. Loading times are shorter because samples are already stored in RAM. KMS is managed by the KMS utility, which allows you to manually purge unused samples to free memory. If you are running out of memory, KMS will try to automatically purge samples that are not referenced by any loaded instruments. So how does KMS work if you have a 64-bit DAW? Well, KMS was created to allow contact to address more than 4 gigabytes in 32-bit OS and applications. Now with the 64-bit OS and apps, it's kind of redundant. Although if you do use large templates such as Badool or Vienna Ensemble Pro and you constantly open or close your DAW or projects, KMS can still provide added value because samples still remain in memory when you close your instruments, multis, banks, or contact instances, or even your DAW. If you open any of these back up, they will load faster than if KMS was disabled. Another cool feature is that you can purge all the instruments, multis, banks, and all contact instances from one location, which will be the KMS utility. Okay, so that is it for the options. Let's move on to the purge button. The purge function keeps track of which samples in an instrument have been triggered since the instrument was loaded. It gives you the option to remove all other samples to reduce the number of samples being kept in memory. Global purge affects all instruments in the multi and is accessed via the purge button. Local purge affects the selected instrument and is available in the instrument header. Reset markers. Zones, or samples, that have been played are flagged. Reset markers deletes these flags, resetting all sample usage data contact has gathered. Update sample pool. This removes all samples not currently flagged as being used and reloads purge samples that have been triggered since the last purge. Purge all samples. Unloads all samples from RAM. Reload all samples. Reloads all samples. Okay, let's move on to the system performance meters. 
These meters display the total number of voices being played, as you can see here, the total amount of allocated sample memory, as you can see here, and CPU and disk load. Minimize view. This button will reduce the contact window to the header of the currently selected instrument and its performance view if available. When, when in minimize view, a reduced control panel provides two arrow buttons that will switch between instruments, the keyboard, the quick load button, system performance meters, and the maximize view button, which will bring contact back into, back into normal view. And that's it for the main control panel. Let's move on to the rack. This is the main space where you work with contact most of the time. It consists of two modes. The multi-instrument mode, or multi-rack mode, lets you view and edit your multi. An instrument edit mode, which lets you edit an instrument. The multi-instrument header is visible when the rack is in multi-instrument mode. The header consists of the name of the currently loaded multi. To change the name, simply click on it and enter a new one. The left and right arrow buttons will replace the current multi with the previous or next one from the same directory that the current one was loaded from. So if you loaded your multi from your browser and you have other multis in that browser, these arrows will allow you to change between the previous and the next ones. The four page buttons allow you to switch between the four instrument pages. Each multi can hold 64 instruments, and each page can hold 16 instruments. So each page is, is six, holds 16 instruments, and a total of 64 instruments can, re, can reside in one multi. Next, you have the KSP button. This toggles the visibility of the Global Script Editor pane that allows you to create, edit, and manage multi scripts. The toggle aux send button toggles the aux send control. This lets you control the signal level routed to the aux channels. And minimize maximize headers button. This toggles all instrument headers between their minimize and maximize size. That's it for today's video. Be sure to tune in next time as we continue our look at all the features of contact. Um, next up, we will have loading and creating instruments and instrument banks, the browser, the master editor, the output section, and quick load. So until next time, now go make some music.